Hey, what's up? It's Oliver again. Uh, as I'm getting ready to leave on this trip Friday, uh, I'm going to pack. This is my pack out on the Pan Am, basically. And uh, I'm going to just kind of run through this and explain what works for me and what doesn't. Um, as I look at this stuff here, it kind of, to me, I usually pack light. This looks a little like overkill. However, uh, you know, this time of year, going through all different terrains, you know, you're going to see all kind of weather, different weather conditions, um, temperature changes, that kind of thing. So it's best to pack accordingly. And, uh, you know, having some experience doing this, this is kind of what I think works, at least for me. So Friday morning, early the 7th of July, I'm heading out from Long Beach. I'm going to be basically going up the eastern side of California. Probably first stop is Reno, Nevada. Um, well, maybe lunch in Mammoth, then Reno, then somewhere close to the California-Oregon border, I'll probably camp or stay for the night. And then the next day will be Bend, Oregon. Um, yeah, basically, here, you can even see it on this little patch here that I made specifically for this, um, that I'll be coloring in states as I go. I This is from my previous trips. It's completely black. That means I've done all 48 states in one side, out the other. So this will be, I believe, my 11th trip coast to coast. Um, I do it on a different bike every time, um, multiple times on different FXRs that I've built, multiple times on different Dynas that I've built, um, my new Softail that I built. This will be the first one on the Pan Am, which it actually is not really built, but I did do some you know, small changes to it. But I think the purpose of this is to see how I like the bike stock more than built. So that's where we're doing this route. But, you know, on these, on these trips, you know, in the, in the fall, I tend to go south and in the summer, I tend to go north. A lot of that is due to weather. Um, obviously right now in the south, it's so blazing hot that it's not even fun. And going up north in the summer is really the only time you can do that. So I try to, you know, utilize that. But I mean, you will see every bit of weather imaginable. I mean, you, you know, I've, I've, I've ridden through 110 plus days and then I've ridden through 40 degree nights, uh, in the same day or whatever, from the beginning of the day to the end of the day, it could be blazing hot, freezing cold, windy, rainy, hot again, then cold again. So you really do need a sort of a wide array of gear. So for me, first and foremost, um, I will have saddlebags on the bike that'll have, you know, certain essentials in those that's easily accessible stuff. For my main luggage, um, a waterproof bag is like essential. A roll top bag is good. I have found that with roll top bags, the stuff that's in the bottom is really hard to get to and really hard to see. Um, so it kind of makes it a pain to like, you have to pull everything out to get to something that's on the bottom, which I don't care for. But anyway, um, this is a kind of a roll top duffel bag, which is waterproof. Um, there's no zippers because zippers will leak. I have another rubber bag like this that I've used that has a zipper top and it being on the back of the bike, riding in rain for nine hours straight, it will get water inside and that sucks when you pull your clothes out and they're wet. So um, essentials, I mean, you know, the regular stuff, shorts, couple, two pairs of shorts. Cause when I get off the bike, sometimes I want to get cool. Obviously plenty of socks and underwear. I'll do laundry on this trip on the road. Um, you know, when I can, I will be camping, but I also will be doing some hotel stuff and some friends houses and stuff like that. So I will do laundry along the way. Um, t-shirts, multiple t-shirts, because if it's hot, you're going to sweat through them. Um, again, just different options. I have long, couple long sleeve shirts. Um, sometimes if it's really hot and sunny, like I'll wear a long sleeve just to not get crazy burnt up. And then I have tank tops, like if, you know, again, after the bike ride, if I just need to cool off or whatever. So a variety of short sleeve, tank tops, long sleeves, all of that. This will all pack in here. Um, I have, it's like a packable windbreaker. This is more of like a off the bike type of um, jacket. This is for when I get to my destination, 
I'll be doing some swap meet stuff, a lot of walking, just again, just sort of hanging out. If it rains, I don't necessarily want to wear like my riding rain gear. So I have a little packable um, rain jacket, a packable down jacket. This probably will go in the saddlebag as a, as a, you know, I usually pack this kind of stuff in the saddlebag so that um, when this is strapped on the bike and bungee corded and stuff, if I get to a gas station per se and it's cold, oh man, I really need to just put on another layer. This is in the saddlebag, much easier to get to. So I just kind of keep that there. Um, regular crew neck sweatshirt. I don't wear hoodies when I ride because it ends up being a sailcloth behind you, which is not fun for hours. Um, I have this really cool little Matador brand um, packable duffel bag. And this thing unzips and turns into a little duffel bag. Like I could use this um, like for a laundry bag. Once I start having dirty clothes, rather than just throwing them back in there, I can put them inside this. I can take this with me if I go you know, somewhere else off the bike, like for, a, you know, going to a swimming place or something, I can pack all my stuff in here, whatever. So this is a packable deal. This is, I actually really like this. I sort of happened upon Matador brand uh, on my own. I really kind of like their stuff. This little um, packable bag. I have a backpack that I use just for like regular travel. That's really convenient. Um, this little thing is actually, they come in packs of threes. And um, it's a refillable like pouch. And uh, I've got sunscreen in this. And you can write on here sunscreen, SPF, you could put shampoo, kind of whatever liquid stuff in here you want. It's got a snap so you could like hang it. You could put it off your belt if you were like at an event all day and you just wanted sunscreen. You don't have to have a giant like Hawaiian Tropic plastic bottle sticking out of your pocket all day. Um, so it's, it's kind of nice. You can travel with this thing. Um, these little, uh, this is like a little neoprene rubber earplug thing. Again, nice when you're riding, nice if you need earplugs to sleep or whatever. Um, they stow in here, you don't drop them and lose them out of your pocket and they don't come out, they're nice. And then a toothbrush cover, which is cool. And again, that little bag, which is like perfect for day trips, overnight trips, but it's just packable. So yeah, I use it as a sort of a laundry bag. It's, it's a great little thing for me. Laptop, I have a laptop because I need to do some work from the road, including these videos. Um, let's see here, that's that. Obviously dop kit with all my toiletries and such. Um, I have this stuff is mostly gonna go in the saddlebags and quick access stuff, but you know, like head headlamps that I use for swap meets if when it's dark or if I need to do any roadside repairs, I have that. Leatherman, a knife, um, you know, earplugs, earbuds, whatever, that kind of stuff, normal stuff. Rain gear is like super important. Um, I use this Harley rain gear because I've, I've had other stuff and this stuff's pretty good and it's packable. I mean, this is pants and a jacket in this thing. You could, this will even go smaller. Um, so you could put this like, you know, on a sissy bar or in a, even on your handlebars if that's all you had. But um, I keep this in the saddlebag because this is like the number one thing that you need quick access to, in my opinion. I've always put this on the right side of the bike saddlebag because when you put on the kickstand, the bike leans over. This is the most accessible piece that I'm gonna want. So I don't want this on the low side saddlebag. It just, I have to get down low and it's harder to get to. Cause a lot of times you ride and out of nowhere, it starts pouring down rain. You gotta like pull over real quick, get dressed real quick. So that's that. Um, I have a riding vest that I wear, kind of again, depending on weather, but I can wear this with short sleeves. I can wear this with long sleeves. I can wear this over something. It's a good wind buffer. Um, and it's tough, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just a nice riding vest. This is MB leathers. Um, my buddy Mario makes these custom. Uh, let's see here. This is all going on the bike, not in this bag, but hammock. Um, because if I camp, you know, sometimes just having a hammock is nice. Um, it doesn't take up a lot of space. 
I have personal dome tent, you know, two person deal that I've had forever. This thing's needs to be replaced soon. It's seen a lot of camping. And I have a um, self-inflating pump up um, sleeping mat, which is, is kind of a big deal. I mean, I, it sucks laying on like a hard ground if there's rocks or anything under your tent. This definitely is a, is a kind of a must in my opinion. Um, I'm not actually bringing a sleeping bag because, um, you know, frankly, like it's more than likely it's going to be hotter than it is going to be colder. Um, so I don't really need a sleeping bag, I don't think. And if it is cold, I have plenty of gear to sleep in. Um, so that's fine with me. Uh, let's see here. This is just a small little waist pouch that I'll either wear or, you know, for off the bike kind of stuff. So for actually like riding gear, which I probably will be riding almost every day in, um, move this stuff out of the way here. Um, Aiken Moto, like I've actually just come upon this stuff. I actually really, really like this for a number of reasons. The number one reason is, and this sort of goes along with the Pan America bike in general, in my opinion, it's an adventure bike. I'm not an adventure rider. I'm like a Harley rider. So I'm not into the fluorescent green ski suits and the, you know, reflective and all that. It's just not me. Like it's a complete turn off to me. So when I ride and I get off my bike, I don't want to look like, you know, I got off a ski lift. I want to look like a normal person or whatever. So this stuff is like very incognito. I mean, it is Kevlar lined. It's mesh inside. You can, it will accept armor, which I'm not really going to wear because it's just not really me. Um, but it's got really cool features, waterproof pockets. Like I said, um, the collar, it's like a Chino jacket, like a Barracuda style Chino jacket, um, snap, uh, collar. So it's not flapping in the wind and hitting, hitting you in the face. But I mean, just like a real, like nice fitting, just standard jacket. So, I mean, I, like I could ride somewhere, meet friends for dinner and like go to dinner or go wherever, like out in this. And I totally feel normal. I don't, I don't, it's not like a leather jacket or some whatever, but again, it, it still does offer protection. Same with the pants. Like I, I mean, I wear Dickies or like work pants pretty much every day. So these are just like regular Chino style. Again, takes armor in the knee sections. It's like mesh lined and obviously like it's got Kevlar infused in the, in the material. So like I actually will probably just end up wearing these every day, like on or off the bike. Um, so yeah, I think only available in black, but that's fine with me. Um, yeah, I, I'm like very excited about this riding in this gear and then just like actually owning this gear anyway, like just as a regular everyday kind of deal. Cause there's so many times I'll just get on my bike and you know, I want to like go ride somewhere or go to dinner or go whatever. And like, I don't really, I'm not, I'm not wearing all the gear, but I should, if I, you know, for safety's sake, I probably should, but like, this is a nice compromise to me. And then shoes, footwear, um, basically like I'm, again, I'm sort of feel like I'm overpacked. Most times I, I, I kind of, I really do like footwear. So I'm going to bring like two pairs of shoes or a pair of boots and a pair of shoes. And, um, basically like for riding, like on the bike, um, I got these Danner GTX. These are like the Filson edition, um, GTX hikers. They're Gore-Tex. They're lightweight. Um, like I'm not worried about my feet being cold or anything like that because it's summertime, but, um, these are waterproof. They're Gore-Tex. I've had these on last year on my trip and dumped rain and had dry feet, which was amazing. Um, but again, I can wear these like off the bike and still feel somewhat normal. When I get to my destination, I'm doing a swap meet, which is every year it's hot. I walk like 10 miles. So. I'm going to sort of like use these for more like every day. But then when I get to my destinations, I got these again, Gore-Tex cause I like Gore-Tex stuff, but these are Terex hikers, um, like super lightweight and very comfortable. And like, I can wear these with shorts and they're not boots and they're just 
it's just like I can wear these in the city, to the beach, on a swap meet, whatever. So these are versatile and I like them. And they can be, they are waterproof, so they're, they're also good for that. So this is it, all packed up, ready to go. Um, I got all the luggage, sleeping pad, tent on top. All this stuff's waterproof, so no, you know, no issue with uh, it getting rained on or anything. Um, I use this little cargo net on top so that while I'm riding, um, if I take off a sweatshirt or I need a little more back support, I can grab my sweatshirt, stuff it under here, and I have an instant back pillow, backrest. So that's a little trick I like to, I mean, I, I think these things are very useful. You can stuff a water bottle in here between gas stops and you know, this works really well. So on my easy access, Saddlebag. Um, this is where I keep my tools and rain gear and stuff like that. You know, personal bag. This is just stuff that I want to carry with me at all times. Um, I got this Lexan uh, air pump because, like last year, I got a flat tire. I got like a nail in my tire. I did have a plug kit with me, but it was like a more of a bicycle small tire thing. Get a get a full size one with these kind of tires. So yeah, plug kit and air, so if you're, you know, if you're jammed up, you're good. Um, I keep a spare set of gloves just in case. Um, a voltmeter I keep on me because especially with newer electrical bikes, like you can diagnose, like is your bike not charging? You can diagnose it. Is there something that's disconnected? You can diagnose with this if you know what you're doing. Um, I got the Harley toolkit in here. Um, this basically is like their, I think it's their toolkit for the Pan Am. And so it has some kind of Pan Am specific stuff. Every bolt on here is Torx. So there is a Torx socket set in here and you can connect it with this little socket wrench. There's like wire if you need to like string something up. There's even tape, like yeah, it's for off-road stuff. If you crack some plastics or something. Um, again, I'm like on road. To be honest, like the dealer network of Harley is so ridiculous that there's a dealership like close basically wherever you are, um, which is a really nice thing, especially on these kind of newer bikes that they do work on. Um, and also, you know, I've found um, in my travels that the friend network is sometimes the best thing. I mean, you can only pack so many tools. A lot of times things need like serious repair and like the community that we're in YouTube, Instagram, whatever, like people can get the message out. Hey, this guy needs help. Someone's usually close. That's a, that's like a godsend sometimes. Um, Harley rain gear. Like I said, this thing is like the most quick, easy access item that I love to have right there. And then I keep like a little extra battery pack. I probably would put this up on the handlebars, but, um, yeah, just like a little phone, you know, lithium battery pack. Um, but yeah, all this stuff fits in here, no problem. I'm gonna probably take all this out of the packaging before I leave, but uh, yeah, you get the idea. This stuff, I mean, I still have tons of room to spare in here. So for a while, I've been running this Bell SRT modular helmet. I, I wasn't like a modular guy at first, but actually they're really nice to be able to flip up the front. Um, talk to somebody if you need directions or if you need to talk to your buddy or whatever. Um, and also just to get more air, like, you know, I mean, even with this windshield, I can ride with this thing up completely up and it doesn't like catch the wind or anything. So it's kind of nice to have like, you know, some fresh air. I mean, I don't, you know, if I have a water bottle, I can flip that up, drink water, put it back down. It's really cool. And I got a transition shield on this thing. So like during the daytime, it's smoked. At night, it goes clear. And again, like I've played with other helmets with like um, changing shields out and man, it is a pain, especially when it's like cold or rainy or at night. Um, this thing, like, cause I generally sometimes ride from when it's dark through the day to when it gets dark again and having to change shields two times is not fun. Um, I got a Cardo uh, system on this thing for music, GPS, whatever. I, I probably will never have a helmet without one because it's a game changer. Same with the transition. Once you have it, it's so good. You, you'll never want to go back. 
Um, but yeah, anyway, modular SRT, I really like it. Um, so like on the bar setup on this, um, I did for this trip go two inch taller risers. Um, just like the bike felt like I was a little forward, leaning forward. So I wanted to be sitting a little more upright. So the seat I designed has that in mind. It sits you more at a upright angle. Um, the little bit taller bar gives in turn a little bit more pullback. Um, I've adjusted the bars. Um, I did go with a little bit wider front little wind um, damper thing here. I mean, it's literally just an inch or two wider, but I think it does probably offer a little more coverage. I did add this little clamp on mini bar bag, Speed Freaks. I've had this for a long time and it's gone to like four different bikes, but literally it's just like a, you know, a little waterproof bag that I can put my wallet or phone in if it's raining hard and I don't really want it to be on the handlebar. I can stuff it in here or whatever, you know, I can put a water bottle in there or something. Anyway, it's a nice little bag. Um, I did add a Ram mount. Um, I've played with different mounts. Um, I haven't tried them all. I had another company that like ruined my phone. So I went back to Ram mount because I feel like there is a good bit of like vibration dampening in this. Um, and I, frankly, I had this from another bike. So I just stuck it on here. Um, I, so these bikes do have like a charging port up here and they do have like a battery tender cable that's hanging out. However, those only work when the bike is off. The, the charging port here and the battery tender, you can charge your phone off of it, but only when the bike's turned off, which is kind of weird to me. So there is heated gear ports on this, which I used a um, coax to SAE connector and then did a, um, this is like a little, it has a USB and a USB-C um, thing and it's a little on off charger. It has a voltmeter on top. So you can, that's actually kind of nice, even though the TFT display has that already. But yeah, phone will plug in, charge while I'm riding. Um, I can plug in a separate thing to charge my Cardo or my laptop, whatever, you know, charge stuff up. So, oh, and then in the bag, last but not least, I do, I forgot to even talk about these, the Aiken gloves. Um, these are like a leather palm, sort of semi-padded, like Moto X style glove. They're really short on the wrist, which I like, especially for summer because like, you know, you just, I just don't want like the sun's hot and that this, this these are short and they're nice. They're soft leather. Um, obviously you can touch your phone. They have the fingertip deal. Um, so yeah, I actually really like these. I've been wearing these the last um, week or so and uh, I really like them. They fit really good, stretchy, good grip, all that. So pretty psyched on these. Um, but I, you know, I, I carry at least another set of gloves just in case you lose drop one or whatever. So these are my number one gloves and I have a spare set of something else. So in the previous video, uh, there's a shot of me fabricating something. That is actually something that I knew immediately that I was gonna need um, after just riding the first couple hundred miles. The, the foot position is not bad, but I know that riding 800, 1,000 miles a day, like your knees just ache. So um, I took the factory crash bars off and I added a gusset piece in here that has two positions for a fold down highway peg. It's just something I had off of one of my other bikes, a, a set of Avon um, fold down highway pegs. So, you know, I have them in the far back position, but you can move them an inch or two inches forward. Um, fold up, you can stretch out while you're riding. It's kind of, you know, for really long trips, it, it makes a big difference. So that's basically the whole setup of this, um, the packing, the whole setup of the bike. The next video that we make will be from the Harley 120th um, in Milwaukee. That's like July 13th through the 16th. That'll be about 3,500 miles in on my trip. So I'll definitely have a lot of feedback. If you, if you see me there, say what's up. If you have any questions about the Pan Am or the trip, just let me know. I'm, I'm there. I'll see you guys there.